Hello, in today's video I'm going to be showing how I forge a shepherd's crook. So this is a design that Bill Carter taught me how to make. There are loads of different types of and styles of shepherd's crooks out there that you can make, open ones and closed ones, but I'm just going to show how I make this one and of course there are using Bill Carter's sort of philosophy or phrase that he once told me there are an infinite number of ways to make something and there are maybe three or four good ways and so that's what I'm going to try and show in this video today. Also the tash that is living on my upper lip is not a fashion statement. I'm doing Movember with uh, a lot of people at my rugby club and so I'm going to leave uh, more information about that at the end of the video. So let's get straight into now making the shepherd's crook. We've got some 10mm round bar, we'll work it out, half on, half off, over the far edge of the anvil to nip out this material and forge a lovely long taper which we can then scroll up and wrap up into a shepherd's crook. So if we come back, neaten up, have our four sides, Moving the steel under the hammer rather than moving the hammer to the steel. So you're working like a power hammer. Begin to knock the corners off to form an octagon. Work the end out a little bit more just to get it to a nice fine point. Finish that off as it's a much smaller volume so it'll lose its heat a lot quicker than the rest of the bar. And now come back refining that octagon. And now Knock off the sides to get a 16 sided shape, whatever one of those is called, and roll the bar to get a nice cone shape. Knock this edge over and begin to form a little bit of a scroll. The scroll is set on the end of the bar. The next thing to do is put an offset bend or a, just a 90 degree bend back here. And we wanna make sure that the scroll is facing the correct way when we do this so that when we wrap the scroll up, it's coming on the outside of the shepherd's crook. So that means if we're gonna bend it off to the left there, the scroll also wants to be off to the left. And then the bend is gonna be coming in where the taper ends. So the taper is ending about here, so that's where the bend wants to be, so that it's then flowing nicely in all directions as that taper gets gradually smaller until the scroll at the end of the shepherd's crook. So to do this, I'm gonna do it at the vise rather than doing it at the anvil, as we'll get a much tighter bend at the vise. It's all personal preference. I prefer a nice tight bend, you can have a, a flowing bend going into the piece, so it's much more open, but I quite like a tighter bend on these shepherd's crooks. So I'll take the vice's width of the bar, and then I'll use some forks to get in, and bend that around to 90. So we'll take a new heat, doing the vice the wrong way, Take a new heat and then begin to wrap it up into that shepherd's crook shape. I've quenched off that end scroll so that as I'm now scrolling it up here, 
and hammering on the end. I'm not going to distort that shape that we have. So if we just use glancing blows, so we don't bruise the taper that we put on. Just slowly wrap it around. I need a little bit more heat just back here. So I'll take another heat. You can see we've got the shape there most of the way forged. Just needs a little bit more refining. There we go. That's the shape we wanted. It was literally just a couple more hits and there we have it. I'm faffing with it now to get it perfect. Scrolls and shepherd's crooks and all of these things, they're the sort of pieces that I find I could just take almost hours on refining and most of the time all that I do is make them worse. So that's the shape that I was going for. You can of course do lots of different styles of shepherd's crooks and you can have them open with a bit of a gap here and all sorts of different shapes. This was the one that Bill Carter taught, taught me how to make and I, I've, I really like this. It's nice and flowing and it, it, it is that key thing again of having where the bend starts, that's where the taper starts. So it's tapering all the way around. I'm going to show a design now that I accidentally came up with after I was faffing around with one of these shepherd's crooks and I ended up putting a too tight a bend in this side of the, of the piece and it ended up with the scroll coming over the bar. And then I was looking at it afterwards and I was like, I rather like that, I'm going to keep it. And so I call this design the mouse's tail just because why not? I, I couldn't think of a better name, so that's what I call it. Let's get into making it. I've tapered out a bar, tapered out this bar so I can just start on the scroll at the end and then go from there. So in reviewing this design, I find that it actually looks a little bit better with a bit of a bigger scroll on the end here compared with the shepherd's crook. So I'll take another heat to get the size that I want on this scroll. That'll do us. So we can put the 90 degree offset bend in it now. Again, I've quenched off the end so we don't distort that scroll. And it's just the same. Now we're wrapping it up. Blunting blow so we don't ruin that nice taper we've put on the piece. And I've just offset it so that now as we bring this around, we've got a gap for it to go through. So it can rest onto the bar here. That scroll can rest on the bar. So we've got to make sure that we go nice and tight on this end of the shepherd's crook, or at least maybe you want to call it a mouse's tail. So we have the two there and you can see, I hope you can see that they are pretty similar in their, in their shape. You know, they both have this eye and then it's literally here, it's just a bit of a tighter bend on this side so that it comes over onto the bar. But you can see that they, they are two different, different effects in a way that you can create. Anyway, 
I hope you like this. I hope you enjoyed this this video, a bit more of a, a tutorial style. Maybe that's something that you want want more of, I don't know. Let me know if, if you want more sort of how-to videos rather than just a video in which I make something. So thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something yourself and go have a go at making these two different designs in your own your own forges. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm doing Movember with my, my rugby club. And so if you want to donate any money to go towards men's health, I'll leave a link down below to a donations page of which all the money is going to help the men who need it. So thank you for watching the video and thank you if you are kind enough to make a donation. I'll see you soon.